Hi guys, uh, today I'm gonna show you how I do hair in ZBrush and it's mostly adjusted for 3D printing. So if you want to learn how to make it more realistic, uh, unfortunately this is not the tutorial for you. Uh, this is just the way how I do stuff and um, at the end I'm gonna show you some new option that I've learned uh, the other day that I think it's really cool. So, uh, I'm gonna quickly make some kind of shape that we're gonna use as a face. Okay, so, first thing that I do is uh, I just make the shape of the hair. So, uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna hold control and that's gonna bring me this selection tool. So I can just quickly make the shape that we're gonna cut out. So something like this. Okay. Quickly mask it. And just be sure that you have covered everything. Okay, and uh, now I'm just gonna go to Subtool and click on Extract and make it slightly th thicker. So I'm just gonna use 0 0.03, Extract and Accept. This is gonna be our hair. Uh, what I do usually, I just lower the, the number of polygons. Active pol points are now 31 thousand so i'm just gonna hit the remesher and it's gonna bring it to 140 so that's that's enough and uh, now i'm gonna use inflate so hit brush then press i so you can easily locate it and click on inflate uh, and the goal here is that uh, this shape is now pretty thin so i want to make it thicker uh, so it overlaps with, with the face, so there are no holes between the hair and, and the head. And also I'm using the same thing just to roughly shape the, the, the st uh, style of the hair. So I'm just gonna quickly add some thickness. Like, like that. And uh, now I'm gonna just subdivide it, so Ctrl D or here on divide. Slightly move this. Uh, and as you can see, I'm using symmetry for, for all of this. Uh, but now we're gonna turn off the symmetry because I don't want the hair to, to look the same from uh, on one and the other side. Uh, so press X, symmetry is gone. If you want to press, uh, if you want to bring symmetry back just press x again and the uh, first brush that i'm gonna use is standard so we can crank up intensity a little bit and i'm just gonna make some some type of the haircut it doesn't matter what it exactly it's gonna be but I'm just roughly making some kind of shape and if, if you're using symmetry for that then you'll have problems right in the middle because uh, easily it, uh, everyone will easily spot that uh, those parts are exactly the same so at one point they'll just start overlapping and it, it just looks weird so this right now looks like top of my head, unfortunately. Uh, so this is the, the good beginning. Uh, now I will just add more subdivide levels and uh, I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller and now we can add more on top of that okay 
you can smooth it out a little bit if you want. Uh, some people are using, instead of the standard, some people are using uh, clay buildup for example, so they just roughly make some areas like so and then they smooth them out. Uh, also it's not a bad, bad way, so it, it, it's really up to you. Uh, also you can change alpha to something else, but in this way you will basically get the standard brush. And just work on your hair until it, until it just looks good for you guys. Uh, it really depends on what kind of hair you want to do. Uh, sometimes I'm using a damp st standard just to add more depth. So you can just again follow the line and smooth it out. A little bit just so there are some variations and to look much better in in 3d printing uh, also to to avoid this lego effect uh, it's always better to just do some random areas so it doesn't look way too smooth and on top of that just use them standard so you can just make some kind of difference. No, you just need to experiment and eventually it's gonna look great. Uh, sometimes I'm using one of the tools like Trim Dynamic or, or Polish um, if I want to to make it slightly different, more stylized, more like like so, like I don't know how to even say it. Uh, I did the same technique to to my cyclops. And I was overall happy with this style. So there are a bunch of ways how to do that. Um, another tool that I'm using often is snake hook. Uh, I, I use it for for lino for these areas, and it, it's a really easy thing to use. So you just grab one point and just move it around so you can add more spikes or less it's up to you uh, but don't forget that all of these are much better if you add just more de details to each of those so if I just start doing stuff like, like this is gonna look much more natural just uh, try to again follow the, the line of everything else just to make it much better that's how how this hair was made another option that some people are using they they do uh, hair individually so each uh, sub tool is is different part of the, of the hair so uh, that's all also one of the things that you can explore. So I'm gonna insert sphere, move it on top, just make it smaller. Okay, and now I'm gonna use move tool. Just start dragging. Here, like so. Uh, then we, we can just duplicate and use rotation to move it a little bit 
and uh, after that we can just use move tool and slightly adjust that part And there's another option that I really like. I've, I've learned it the other day and it, I think it's really amazing, um, especially for stylized hair. So uh, now I'm gonna go to brushes. I'm gonna press C and then I'm gonna choose curve strap snap. I, I just love that name. So now if I start making some kind of shape, you will see this line curve. Uh, and it's following the the shape of of the object that I've picked, but it doesn't look right. Uh, so we're gonna quickly fix that. Uh, we're gonna go to stroke, and then to curve modifier. And I'm gonna click on this size as well. And curve fall off. And now I'm gonna quickly adjust this part. So, uh, I'm gonna change it like that. And now, if I draw my shape, it's gonna look like this, which looks nice. Uh, I can change the thickness. So if I just change the size here and I click on it, it's gonna update. Uh, also, I can just grab one of the points and start moving it across the object. Uh, also, you can go to stroke, curve, and then let's say lock start. So this is a start. And if I grab this point, you will see that start is locked and we can use this for some kind of windy effect or something else. Same thing applies to uh, the end as well. So I can just lock start and the end, and then just move the middle part. So these two points are gonna stick together in, in the area where they were. Uh, and once we are happy with, with the shape, we can just click on the side here and now you will see that the line has disappeared. So I cannot go back and pick that area. But I don't need to because I'm just gonna draw another one. Then click on the side can do really nice shapes uh, also I can just go like crazy and overlap them and once I'm, I'm satisfied with, with the result I will just unselect everything so I'm gonna hold control and just make quick small shape outside of, of the object and if I click here, you will see that each of these strokes, strokes has made uh, its own polygroup. So now we can go to split, group split, okay? And now each of these is separated, which is really cool because we can now control it completely. So for example, if I click on this one, I can select the move tool, and just put it on top of all of this, but I want, want it to, to go underneath this one. Then I can pick this one. Uh, I'm moving through subtools by holding Alt and just clicking on whatever I want to select. So I can do it like this. I can move it around, put it on top of everything. And it, it really looks really nice. You can you can already see the potential. Now I'm just gonna uh, subdivide it a few times. Gonna select all of them. Sometimes it's easier to select if you have smaller size brush. And this one, yes. And uh, now we can just add thickness. So I'm gonna go to uh, inflate. And now I can just add thickness to this whole shape. Fix 
use that. Uh, and it looks really cool. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have learned something and if you have, please share this video with uh, other people that could learn something from it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that and hit the bell next to it so you can get notified whenever I'm releasing a new video, new tutorial. Uh, hit the like button and I really hope I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!